Sarah, good to see you. Welcome to Pop Alternative. Hello. You know, it's interesting because um, I always love when the romantic comedy kind of reinvents the wheel a little bit. And I feel like you have this with this kind of unique concept on what kind of happens to these characters. So what's that like kind of reading the script for a film like this, which in a lot of ways kind of is a unique kind of take on the rom-com if you think about it? Yeah, when um, when I read the script, I I just really liked it. I thought it was like really quirky and heartwarming. Um, and it kind of reminded me of rom-coms from the 90s yeah. that I like grew up on um, as I was a 90s teen. And I, was, I grew up in the suburbs of DC and I just like loved those, all of those movies. So it, it had a kind of nostalgic feeling, um, but it was also a really like fun character that I hadn't seen before. And I was really excited that uh, Josephine was going to play. And I was really excited to see her in a comedic role. Um, so there was just like a lot of elements that drew me uh, to, to the project. What is that kind of early <laughs> mindset once everything is kind of set and you're good to kind of go to screen with all the zoom talks and everything casting. And then, you know, that first kind of step of having it on script to the big screen, so to speak, the film, what's that kind of like when you first start filming this? The first take of every movie is really surreal, you know, because it's it takes so long to get there to the starting line. And um, but it's it's so exciting. I mean, and and these I think the the thing that makes this movie so special is the cast. Um, and just seeing Josephine bring this character to life and and really animate her was just so exciting. So it's it, it feels great. It's it's very cathartic. The first take is like okay, we're off to the races. We're doing this, um, and it's it just creates really good momentum. Speaking of the cast, I mean, uh, Drew Starkey did an amazing job in this film. He is an actor that a lot of people have seen in the past playing more kind of serious roles or in other movies that aren't kind of like romantic comedies. Like he's Rafe Cameron on Outer Banks on Netflix, and he was in the Hellraiser movie on Hulu. What was that like being able to direct him um, in a genre and a character that, you know, a lot of viewers, the audience have not seen before? Um, well, that it was so exciting that he wanted to do a comedy because I had also I got introduced to him through Outer Banks and and um, he was just coming off of the Hellraiser movie, so he had been you know playing a lot of bad guys and I think <laughs> he was he was really excited to play um, a more uh, kind of fun, gentle, uh, funny character in a rom com, um, and so yeah, he was really excited to just you know change, shift gears, um, and he's a great. He has really great comedic instincts. He's studied uh, improvisational comedy, um, and he he's great in comedies. I want to see him do more comedy. I think he's really, really suited for it. Have you had a chance to speak to him afterwards about the idea of him doing more comedies? Because that was like my first kind of instinct, too. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that. Like, I'd love to see him in more comedies after this movie. <laughs> yeah, totally. He's great in comedies. Um, yeah, we, we, we met up like when we did ADR, like once the movie <laughs> was you know, getting finished. And, um, and I was like, you got to do more of this. You're so great in, in comedy. And I think he would like to. I think he was just, he had a lot of fun and um, I can see him doing more in the future. The self-reflection component is a big one for me in this one. Obviously, it kind of like presents itself the ever Zoe as this kind of rom-com that has a lot of funny moments and everything. But, you know, the movies that have this kind of like self-reflection, these kind of moments where they're very heartfelt, I think the movie did a very good job there. During the pandemic, you know, we were doing a lot of self-reflection because we had the time to do so and everything. I feel like movies like this become more relatable because we were doing self-reflection. What can you tell me about the self-reflection component of this movie, so to speak, with all these characters, because everyone's kind of figuring things out as they go, if you think about it. Yeah, I mean, I think the main character, Zoe, played by Josephine, is uh, she has a very intellectualized concept of love. At the beginning of the movie, she's a very, you know, in her head, she's she's a computer scientist. She's constantly, like, she's building, like, an app. She's always thinking about everything in terms of, like, algorithms and math and science. Um, and I think once she's, like, thrown into a romantic situation um, where there are just unspeakable... Um, you know, logic to, to, to romance, um, then she has to sort of shift and, and, and kind of adopt a, a more non-intellectual, um, approach. And so, yeah, I think it's, it's sort of about a girl who, who gets out of her head and into the world. You know, 
movies have beginnings, middles, ends, and some of them kind of, I feel like from a filmmaking perspective, it depends on the project, but there might be situations where like, you know, the beginning might be something that's kind of fleshed out, be longer to film, then there's the middle and then the end. What was that kind of filming process of the other Zoe for you? Was it kind of straight down the middle? Did like more kind of scenes at the end take longer? Like, I'm just curious about that specifically. Well, the script was was done when they sent it to me. The writer, Matt Tabak, was, um, had been working on the script for many years. And I think we did kind of flesh out uh, some of the scenes um, in our in our very short prep process. But, um, you know, the, the opening of the movie took a while. And at the end, you know, there's like a big um, third act, and I won't give anything yeah. away, but there is a, you know, a, a third act uh, kind of big set piece. And so those scenes always definitely take longer to film um, than like, you know, the the smaller scenes that are just like two people in a room, obviously. So, yeah, I think the bigger set pieces were were really challenging. And, you know, we had to we had, we were moving very, very quickly. So getting those in the can was 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 a challenge. But it was fun because, again, the cast was fantastic and they just, you know, would nail it on the first and second takes. Was there a specific kind of question or conversation that you recall specifically with Joseph Eden about the role or about the storyline? Like, was there anything kind of interesting that you thought that was kind of brought up like a conversation between the two of you before going to film? Yeah. I mean, we talked about the character a lot, you know, and, and the movie explores themes of love and fate um, and compatibility. And so, you know, and she is a very thoughtful character. And Josephine herself is, is just a very, very thoughtful person. And she really thinks things through. And so we had a lot of in-depth conversations about uh, Zoe and, and her arc um, and and kind of figuring out um, what it what is really the lesson that she is learning on her journey. Um, and it, it and it was really about you know, kind of letting your guard down and again, getting out of your mind and, and into the world. So yeah, we, we had lots of conversations about her because, you know, this movie, it, it actually isn't that plot heavy. It's about, it's very, very character driven. And it's always about like, how will things work out for the character? A hundred percent. It's going to do a limited uh, theatrical release on October 20th. And then uh, November 20, uh, November 10th, people are going to be able to watch it digitally, which is really, really yes, exciting. November Sarah, 10th. so good chatting with you. Thank you so much for your time. Likewise. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. This has been an Autograph Communications production.